Today on BRS TV, we're going to do a quick demo on how to build a do-it-yourself Kalkwasser dripper. Many people are familiar with these cheap and easy to build drippers. More or less, they're just a jug with a couple of holes drilled in the top and two tubes. Today, we're going to step it up a bit and try to build something that's a bit more attractive, but works out the same principles. One tube is located an inch or so off of the bottom of the container and uses a siphon to draw the saturated Kalkwasser solution without also sucking up the material that's settled out at the bottom. The second tube is used to blow into and create pressure within the container to start the siphon, which is much better than the alternative of sucking on the dosing end. Drippers like these are probably the easiest way for the average person to safely and affordably use calc with the aquarium. This dripper will limit the amount dosed in a day, ensure the dose is added slowly, as well as dose only the saturated calcwasser solution. These can be made from basically any type of container, such as an empty two-part container. These cheap and easy versions generally have two holes drilled in the top, and the easiest version just has some soft airline tubing for both tubes. The slightly better version uses rigid airline for the down tube, so you can have a bit more accuracy with the height. The only problem with these is they can be fairly ugly, and my wife just isn't going to let this fly in our home. So let's try and make something a bit nicer. There's really no end to the list of containers that could be used for this, but we found these flip lock glass containers from OXO to be one of the more attractive options. For this project, we're going to need one container of your choice, a couple of push connect bulkheads, preferably the Murloc version that has dual O-rings, which will hold the tubing in straight, which is important here because the tubing will likely have some side pressure, which could cause leaks. We'll also need two of the stem elbows, an optional additional elbow, a valve, some quarter inch acrylic tubing, and something to cut the tube. These bulkheads require a three quarter inch hole, so the first step is to locate a good spot for each and mark them. Next, drill your hole. I'm using a stepper bit here, which seems to work well on this material. Make sure to select the right bit for the material you're using. It's fairly easy to crack plastics or jam the bit, which can send the piece you're working on flying and the reason I'm wearing glasses. After you've drilled both holes, go ahead and secure both of the bulkheads with the supplied nuts and insert the stem elbows. These elbows make it easy for us to rotate the tubing and make the dripper low profile and attractive. Next, we're going to cut our quarter inch acrylic tube. We're going to cut it to a couple inches shorter than the size of your container so that it draws from about an inch off the bottom. One of the easiest ways to do that is just to go ahead and score the plastic tubing and then it will snap right off. Once you have it cut to the proper length, go ahead and insert it into the bottom of one of your bulkheads. And it should be about an inch or so off the bottom like it is. Next, I'm going to cut another couple pieces of short tubing to attach the elbow onto the output as well as the adjustable valve. And lastly, add some additional tubing after the valve as well as on the inlet. All we need to do now is add some fresh water in the kelk. To get the siphon going, all we need to do is blow on the short end and use the valve to reduce the flow to a slow drip, maybe in the neighborhood of one drop a second. Just a couple of additional tips here. When mixing the kelp with purified fresh water, we don't want to dose it immediately. The cloudy solution you're looking at is frequently referred to as a kelp slurry. We want to let it settle out so the solution is basically clear and most of the powder settles out at the bottom. By putting that rigid tube about an inch off the bottom, we're making sure that we're only dosing the saturated caulk. You can control the amount dosed every day by either adjusting the amount of caulk or the size of the container. Keep in mind that the maximum amount of caulk that will dissolve in a gallon of water is two teaspoons. It's fairly typical for someone to try to select a jug slightly less than the amount that they would typically evaporate in a day as an auto top off solution as well. The ongoing maintenance is just rinsing out the container every few days and cleaning the valve every now and then when it gets clogged. This can be done by soaking it in some vinegar to dissolve the calcium buildup. That wraps up today's episode. Today's reefer question is, what is your favorite do-it-yourself project? Share your answers and see what others are saying in the comments area down below. And don't forget to subscribe to see more how-to videos. Thank you for watching BRS TV.